Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today on how to use Talk EHR from a provider's perspective. Your presenter today is Dr. Amna Yunus, the Talk EHR project manager, and my email is ayunus at talkehr.com. Our agenda for this webinar includes the scheduler, patient summary, patient encounter, also known as patient charts, where you will be charting your notes, how to record the patient's history, ordering medications, ordering labs and imaging, managing tasks and messages, and the activities or additional features that you can perform on Talk EHR. Now, once you log in onto Talk EHR, you land up on our dashboard. Over here, the provider can actually get an overview of their practice for the day. All the appointments they have scheduled, how many are pending, how many have arrived, how many you may have seen already, um, any office messages or patient messages that you may have received, any unsigned lab results, any refill requests from patients, any encounters that you have left unsigned from maybe the previous day or the past few days, any documents that you need to view and perhaps sign, for our billing clients, any claims. And now we have a feature for chronic care management. A normal provider would usually start by taking a look at the scheduler. So our scheduler is our prominent feature which gives you an overview of your appointments for the day. It tells you everything from the time of the appointment, the patient name, their gender, their age, their contact number, eligibility status, the reason for their visit, their current status in your office, whether a call was placed, whether they confirmed the appointment, whether it was a no-show, who that appointment is scheduled with, the balance that the patient owes, any copay um, that goes along with their insurance plan, and any notes that your office staff may have noted down while making the appointment. Please make a note that all these scheduler settings can be changed via our settings tab. You can go onto the patient's chart by simply clicking on the name here, or you can go to a particular section by clicking this arrow. Through this arrow, you can go to different sections of the patient's chart, such as summary, activity, demographics, documents, create a new encounter, go to all encounters, create a new claim, view all claims and mark them as arrived. Or you can even delete the appointment from here. We will start by just clicking on the patient's name. Through our summaries tab, you can get a great overview of the patient and all their clinical information, such as their previous four vital signs, their medical history, any advanced directive, their allergies, immunizations, diagnoses, medications, their previous five encounters, any labs or imaging orders that were sent, any messages from this patient, and their previous appointments. You can also see that on our patient chart notes, you get these three colored sections on top, which specify the yellow and the green one are non-customizable. They give you some necessary information that you would require to view before you see a patient or some necessary information that you might want to refer to. This, on the other hand, is customizable and you can click here and add whatever information you require to alert yourself. From here, you would go on to the encounters. Now on our encounters, in the left panel, you can actually view all the past encounters that the patient may had and the reason for their visit. So this would be their day, the reason for the visit, and their chief complaint on that day. You can view all their information from the previous encounters, and then you can, you can even view what their last visit was about. And then you would click here for adding a new encounter, the visit type, check-in time, which would populate automatically according to the time and date that day. You have now created a new encounter. Please note that you can also um, click on this cog wheel to set your note settings. So our encounters uh, tab is customizable. You can add or remove any of these sections as you prefer. 
For now, we will leave all of them on so that I can tell you uh, or give you more information about them. You can also move these sections by clicking and dragging them up or down, however you would prefer to see them, or in the order that your practice normally flows. The same goes for these ones. Now, in the middle panel here, you can actually see all the information that you might want to refer to. It's usually the patient's clinical history or um, any disease they may be suffering from, uh, medications they're taking. Over here on the right panel is where you would be charting the notes for that specific patient for the day. Uh, so we will start off with HPI. Over here you would get, so you would write the chief complaint, the HPI, any major reason for their visit, and who the history was provided by, their patient, their relative. You can also use one of our templates or build your own. Once you write down a template here, and if you would like to add that, you can click on add and give it a template name. Here's how templates normally work on TalkEHR. So let's just take this one as a good example. You click on this template, 18 to 40 years old female. Uh, these are usually used for routine annual visit you click on this tab and then maybe you want to add this one as well so you would just click on one of these so she reports changes you can make uh, keep adding these uh, we will have a separate session on uh, how to create templates on talk ehr uh, it is a great feature that we have. Um, the templates are relatively easy to use um, and we will help you uh, out on uh, how to build them. Now, uh, as you can see, this was reported in bullet points through this cogwheel sign again here. You can set your templates according to how you would like to view them on each section, whether as a paragraph or a bullet view. Then we move on to the vital signs. In our vital signs uh, section, you would be able to view their previous vital signs from their previous encounter. You can note their height, their weight, BMI, their blood pressure, systolic, diastolic, the site, whether the position, uh, whether it was sitting, standing, their temperature, the source of the temperature, their heart rate, rhythm, volume, character, respiration rate, oxygen saturation, whether it was on room air, through a nasal cannula, head circumference, abdominal girth, and add any comments here. In our review of systems pop-up, you can use our default sections that we provide. For example, with eyes, you get discharge, itching, or eye pain, and then once you click on positive, that's how it would show. Now, if you do all negative, it wouldn't be bold. Once you make either one of them positive, this is how it would show up. You can also choose to make them all negative, and you can also expand all at the same time, so it makes it faster for you to chart. Now, if you would like to add your own ROS section, you can do that by clicking here item name so let's say for example we do test and add a sub item lung and add another one please note this is just an example that i'm giving you at the moment and this is how it would show this was the one that i made you can also edit your ros items you would just have to click here and edit or delete either one of those sub items, or you can delete the whole section itself. Another thing that you can do on ROS is by that you can click on previous ROS and it would get a previous ROS from the last visit. Now, right now you ha may have noticed that it said no previous ROS found. There was no uh, ROS documented in the last visit. Otherwise it would populate over here. Our physical exam section also, is similar to our review of system section, we have a default list and sections for the physical exam and the respective systems of the body. You can add a physical exam by clicking here. Your positive values, your negative values, as they are over here. Add another sub item and then click save. You can do the same as you would in the review of system and you can edit these items as well. When you click on hide free text, this pop-up shows up, which would show what you may have 
documented. Now, if you click on all normal, you would get all positive values for the patient. If you click on either one of them as negative, they would show up bolded. You can add any comments in here as well. And this is exactly what would show up on your notes. So let's click save and see how it would show up. There you go. Now, a lot of practices conduct office tests within their practice, such as ECGs, hearing and vision, any EBV, rapid strep, urine analysis, etc., etc. So we do have some default office tests, and then you can add some for yourself. You do that by going into office settings and switching any of them on. We are working on uh, providing a customization feature for this as well, where you can do that as well, right on the pop-up. Otherwise, you can click here, add a test, test name, whether you want a checkbox, a radio button, single line text box, or a multi-line text box. You would basically drag that over here, and you would be able to add the item and save. We will head back to the patient now. For procedures, these are basically your CPT codes. Search your CPT code by the CPT. Uh, so you can either use a description or uh, a code such as 91213. Hit enter and it would show up. You would click on that and over here are the ones that would show up for your current visit. Your most use gets populated as you use your CPT codes. So whatever CPT codes that you normally use or use most often will show up on the top. The ones that you use less will show up at the bottom. And that's how your most used list populates. Checkout notes actually are a great feature because what happens over here is you can uh, write your checkout notes, maybe through a template or even type it out. And along with a checkout time, it will reflect on your scheduler for your office staff to see. So once you've seen the patient and you write down some checkout notes and click save, they reflect on the scheduler and the office staff can just see what instructions you have for the patients and proceed with that rather than you having to get in touch with them directly or in person to let them know what they should be doing for the patient. So for, for example, if you would like for the patient to be for, referred to a cardiologist, you can just let your front desk staff know through this feature. The care plan on Talk EHR is basically a requirement for uh, MU3. It basically has divided the care plan into different sections as they were required by the MU3 certification. This is how they required it. They wanted the health concerns separate, evaluation and outcome separate, interventions, referral, assessment, observation, encounter, and medications. So you would have to fill all of these sections if you want to comply to that. A lot of our users don't necessarily use it. MU3 is still building up on their plan. So currently, it's not necessary that you do use it. In 2019, they will finalize their requirements. And that's when we will advise you that you use it. But we will definitely give you an update on that. I un like We understand this is a tedious task to uh, fill so many sections out. So it's not necessary for you to do it at the moment. Plan of care or patient instructions is where your, your instructions go for the patient. Again, you can build templates here and send out your patient instructions through that or save them, print them out for the patient as you prefer. You can record the cognitive status. You can search for the assessment, normal, abnormal, effective and resolved date, any comments, add another at the same time or click save and move on. Through our functional status, you can search for any activity that the patient may have a problem performing, their ability, your evaluation, whether they're dependent or independent, effective day, if they have a resolved date, then that. And you can add another and save as you would with cognitive status.
Our templates procedure section is under development at the moment. We have provided some default template procedures right now. We will also be most likely providing customization feature here as well, probably in one of our upcoming versions on Talk EHR. Uh, we don't expect this to be coming up anytime soon, um, but we will give you an update as to when we should be expecting that. Chart notes is a section where you can pretty much document anything extra that you would prefer. Some of our users currently use soap notes and prefer to use soap notes. So we, we do advise them that they can use that here. One way that you can do that is by creating a template for SOAP, subjective, objective assessment and plan, and then basically just charting down your note that way. In that case, most of our users end up having their chief complaint section, their vital signs, and then the chart notes. And that's where their soap notes are. You can choose to do this or use this section any preferred way you would like to. As I mentioned, TalkHR can be used in different ways. It's customizable in many aspects. And we would love to hear your feedback. If you have any points that you would like to share with us or any ideas, please do share them on our forum that you can find up here, Talk EHR Forum. Now with our allergies, now wherever you see the plus sign, you can always click on that and that section would open up for you to add an allergy. Now you can document your allergy as drug, food or environmental. With drug allergies, there is a benefit that when you record the drug allergy, if you are prescribing a medication that would interact with the drug, it will alert you, get an alert that you shouldn't be prescribing that drug because the patient is allergic to it. You can override that alert though, but it, it is definitely a feature that TalkHR provides. To edit any allergies, you can always click on them and change any end date, observation date, or make any edits that you would prefer to. If the patient isn't uh, doesn't have the allergy anymore, you would just click on inactive. For diagnosis, these are basically the ICD codes. You can search your ICD codes here, or you can find them by a description. The unspecified ICD-10 codes are represented by an orange color and the expired codes are represented by red. You can mark them as a primary diagnosis and you can delete them from here as well. Please note that all diagnoses that were ever recorded for a patient will be shown over here and any additional diagnosis that you add will be added to this list. Once again, your most used column populates according to the ICDs that you use and the ones that are used the most will show up on the top. To edit any diagnosis, you can click on it and mark it as acute, chronic, a health concern, the type, condition control, the degree, the status. If the diagnosis or disease is still active, you would keep it as active. If it's resolved, you can click in on resolved and it would go into your resolved section over here. The resolved diagnosis does not populate on the claims. Please make note of that. It's not something that the insurance would consider when you submit the claim. So if you resolve a diagnosis, it will not show up against the claim. You can click on education resource to get some information on the specific disease as well. You can add any comments you would like to against the diagnosis and click save. You can document the patient's history by clicking on the history icon here. You can document their social history, which includes tobacco, alcohol use, their marital status, any personal information, including highest education, industry, occupation, residence type, their family history, a risk assessment, OBGYN status, and please note that once you click on pregnant, you get fields that are relevant to that. Dysmenorrhea shows fields re relevant to that. And same goes for menopause. Their past medical history, their past surgical history, any past hospitalization or procedures they may have had. And a quick social survey, which includes their financial resource strain, education, stress, depression, physical activity. 
These are some of the default features that TalkEHR provides. Once again, we do plan on giving customization on uh, these pop-ups that don't show them currently, but they would be in our upcoming versions. You can add medication by clicking on the plus sign here. Now, when you click on adding a medication, usually when there is insurance plan against a patient, it would show up over here. You would click on the insurance plan. There would be a radial checkbox here, and then you would continue. Now, what happens with that is that when you search for medication, only those medications would show up that the patient can get within their insurance plan or uh, the medications that they're eligible for. If there are any other medications that you wish to provide that don't show up in that search, you can always click, there would be a use none button over here. You can always click on that and the entire list of medications would show. We have received questions in the past where our users have asked us uh, as to why some medications don't show up. and. Uh, that's why I'm telling you right now that that is one of the reasons. So you can always click on use none and then proceed from there. So once you hit on continue, you can search for your medication. Let's make it simple and search for Tylenol. When you type in, always make sure to hit enter and then you click on the medication. Now you can, if you signed up for our e-prescription, you can send it electronically once your e-prescription is enabled. Otherwise, you can always give them a paper prescription or even assign a medication as an external prescription. External prescriptions would be something that your practice hasn't provided to the patient. It would be through maybe another doctor or the hospital. You would click here to add some predefined SIGs or it is also a free text field and you can write over here as well. Like that. Any fields that have this red asterisk against it are mandatory anywhere on Talk EHR. So you would have to provide the quantity, the unit, the number of refills, and then the prescriber, who the prescriber is. Please note that the prescriber will not show for a provider that hasn't enabled their electronic prescription. So once I make it into paper, the prescriber will show up. The pharmacy, you can search for the pharmacy in your state or anywhere in the US by clicking all. Your my list populates as you use Talk EHR. So whatever pharmacies you start using and adding to your patients, they will show up in your my list. Initially, I would recommend that you start by my state or all. You can give any in instructions that you would prefer to to the pharmacy. Find out any patient education or drug education. And then you can click on add another or next. And then you would proceed with printing it out or sending it out via electronically. To edit a prescription, you would have to click on any one of these that you already prescribed. And then you can change the medication uh, instructions over here. You can renew the medication or you can cancel the prescription. You can print it, reconcile, mark as inactive. If the patient is not on that medication anymore, you can always mark it as inactive or you can simply delete it as well. If you want to have access to the medication in the future, you should definitely mark it as inactive. So if you mark it as inactive, it comes as a separate section over here. We also show the electronically prescribed medication separate from the paper prescriptions. You can add the immunizations here. 
the vaccines over here would populate according to your immunization inventory which you can set up through this hyperlink here or you can do it via the settings tab here you can mark an immunization as historical if it was given sometime in the past or whether you may have advised it to a patient and he refused Now, one thing that I would like to show you regarding medications is on our summary tab. Now, in our summary tab, if you would like to get any medication reconciliation or any drug history from the patient, for the patient from pharmacies or any other providers that may have prescribed them, you can do that through these two icons here. So if you click on it, it will tell you that these medications are something that the patient is already taking and where we got it from patient record. And then you would just click on the ones that you want and then hit next. You can do the same for drug history as well. You can get the external history too and import it. Now, after you are done with the encounters, you would save it and then you can sign it. Please note that once you sign the encounter, you cannot edit the encounter or make any particular changes to it. We're going to sign the encounter right now. Now, once the encounter is signed and if you would like to make any changes, you would have to do that through amendments. Now, in the amendments, you would again have to fill in all the mandatory fields and you would have to mention whether it was by a re request by a provider or the patient and if you would like for that amendment to show within the same section or or how like under that section what you would do is you would click here and i'll just give it to you as an example you click on allergy patient no longer has allergy to penny so in G, you would mark the status as accepted, denied, and click save. So this is how it would show up on your chart. And the same would reflect it on the print as well. So it will show the request detail, the date, and the time. And the sign here would be changed to amended. Although this would still be a signed encounter, it just shows that there have been changes that were made to it. Now, if you would like to see any labs against that patient, labs would normally show up in your documents tab. Over here, you can create different folders. You can scan a document and attach here as well. You can choose a file from your computer system and you can add it here too. These folders do build on their own. So for example, the insurance folder that you see here that builds up on it, when you scan a document, when you scan a document here, you would select the scanner, start the scan, whether you want it black and white, gray, color, and then you would upload the document. Now, with our insurance folder, you might be aware of our talk check-in app that uh, TalkEHR provides. It is available on Google Play Store as well as on the Apple Store. There are some devices that work with it, so please make sure that you confirm that with us. We do recommend using an iPad. And through that, what uh, your patients can do is they can check in at your office. So the iPad would be lying on your front desk, or you can have it on a stand, and the patient can come in, check in on the app, they can take a picture via the iPad of their insurance card and it would straight away come into their documents tab here. If you have created an interface to receive electronic lab results from lab, they would uh, populate against your patients here after you have viewed them on the dashboard and signed them. So they would populate against the patient and uh, or if you want, you can always scan a paper lab result as well and upload it on their folder here. Once received electronically, this is how a normal lab report would show up. The ones in red, the abnormal results. And then what you can do is you can attach them to a particular folder. You have a list of all different folders. If there's a document subtype. And then you can assign a particular lab result to maybe uh, your front desk staff or anyone else within your office. 
and um, leave any comments for them. So if, for example, if you send it to your front desk staff, it will be assigned to them as a task. And you can leave comments as to like, please call the patient and tell them to schedule an appointment regarding their test results. You would save the document or you would sign and save. When you sign it, it just uh, tells you that you have seen the document and signed it. You can also fax the report right off of this tab. We also have a patient portal called Talk PHR. There's more information on that on our website. We have a web-based patient portal as well as apps on both Google Play Store as well as the Apple Store. And you can invite your patients to the patient portal via this link, after which they would receive an email. They can log in using the email that they provided you or phone number, and they will be receiving a code on their cell phone. They can sign up for the patient portal and you can give them access to uh, their documents through this switch. Please note that you will have to make some settings of for the patient portal via our settings tab, and we will be having a different session for the patient portal soon as well, where we will give you some detailed information on that. To order labs and imaging, you would go on to the summary, click on the plus sign here, select a lab name whether so once you've done your lab setups through our setup a widget on our dashboard or via the settings tab the labs that you have created an interface with or haven't created an interface with will all show up in this list you can click that particular lab, mention the ordering provider, and then search for the order test and click next. Or if you don't want to order it now, you can always save it as a draft. The same goes for imaging order as well. Once you do that, and if you would like to save that lab order as a template, you can save it as a template and then it would populate as your order template here. You can edit your templates. You can also create your lab template through our settings tab. Just for your information, a lot of the things that were added in the encounters can also be added via the summary tab, which your office staff can perhaps use as well. So all these plus signs do show anywhere on Talk EHR that you can add something to it. Now, just some additional features on Talk EHR that you can find in the activities tab. Do this, if you click on our drop down here, you can see all the different features that we provide. So through the appointments, appointments, you can see their entire history of the appointments that they've had in the past. And if you click on either one of them, it would take you to that exact encounter. Communications shows any communication that you've had with the patient. You can click on add communication, requested by, requested for whether it was done by phone, orally, fax, telehealth or other means. Talking about telehealth, we are building out that feature. It will be provided in our upcoming versions, as I've mentioned for many other features before as well. It is currently under beta testing and it will be released very soon. You can generate your cumulative trend report here. You can add an education resource for that particular patient that you would like to provide, or maybe you have provided it already. All their encounters from the past. Any immunizations that you administered to the patient. Any implantable devices that the patient uses, and you can add a device by clicking over here. Referral tracking, any outgoing or incoming referrals. And you can send a referral by clicking here. You can email or fax the referral. Referral to would be added through the address book. Please note that you cannot just type in a phone number. What you would have to do is you would have to add the contact to the address book and then search for the name of the person you would like to send the fax or email to and then move ahead with this. You can preview. If you click on preview, you can print it. Otherwise, you can fax or email.
You can view any labs or imaging orders that uh, you may have sent out for the patient and it shows your status as well. Medication adherence, any patient letters. You can send patient letters or print a patient letter. You can do that by clicking on add patient letter here. The settings of the patient letters or the templates can be made on practice setting. We can show you that through one of our sessions in which we would kind of do an administrator or a practice manager workflow. CCM communications, this is the most recent feature that we added to Talk EHR. Uh, you can add your chronic care uh, management communication by clicking on this and um, basically it would uh, jot down the time and everything and give you like a proper table here that would also populate in your claims section. This is usually used for Medicare purposes. I will hold a very small webinar or maybe just a, a video tutorial on how you can work with the chronic care management communications. Perhaps even include that in one of our future webinar sessions. And then any disclosure details that you would like to assign to the patient. So this is a wrap up of our session today on uh, the provider workflow on Talk EHR. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us via phone, email, or you can send in an email to me as well. The emails are responded to in the order that they arrive. Uh, we would prefer that you do send in your ideas via our forum that I showed to you earlier in our presentation. I'll show it to you again. Right here. This is our forum. You can get some updates on Talk EHR over here. Share your thoughts or ideas in this section or simply talk to other Talk EHR users in this section. Our responses to inquiries on the forum are definitely much faster than they are on emails. So we would recommend that you send in your queries here or share your thoughts here. We will respond to you as soon as possible. And we thank you for your time today. We do hope that this session was helpful for you. And we hope to see you again for our next webinar session. Thank you.